Hi there and welcome to this video tutorial in the How to Model series. In this video tutorial we will be looking at the cottage walls. At the end of this video tutorial you will know how to reinforce the walls using wood, how to make and apply a paper mache finish to the walls and also how to paint the walls for a finished. You will need waste timber cut into 8mm by 8mm strips to reinforce the walls. The reinforcement of the walls will look something as shown in the two images here. This is shown in further detail in the video later. You will need to make the paper mache mix old newspaper, flour, water and salt for the paper mache technique. To make the paper mache paste, you mix equal amounts of flour and water into a container and you mix the paste until it is of a good consistency. We add salt to this mix to prevent mold growth on our cottage model. The development of the walls is given in this resource package. The development of the wall is shown here. In red you will see the openings for the windows and the doors. These should be cut out completely before actually assembling the development of the walls. You see here the front, the side, the rear and the fourth side of the model. Also shown is the base of the model. Assembly of these are folded, of the four walls are folded around this base and simply with the use of masking tape held in position until we apply the paper mache finish which will hold it in position for good. Okay, once we have our walls cut out, the four walls that is the front, the side, the back and the other side, we fold them around a rectangular base as shown here. Now the measurements for the rectangular base are the exact same as the internal measurements as shown here of the inside of your cottage model. Now it's important that you cut out the windows and the door openings before you fold together your model like shown here. And what I do is I just use a piece of masking tape to hold the base to the side walls. Now we're going to have one corner as well that's going to need masking tape put along it because this is where the start of your fold and the end of your fold are. So just put masking tape over these corners to hold them in position. Now what I'm going to show you next is how we add in the timber reinforcements for the inside of the model as shown here. Now there's a very good reason why we add these timber reinforcements in. Number one is it actually strengthens up the model an awful lot. See, if I try and squeeze this model here, it doesn't squeeze too easy. Whereas if I squeeze this one, it flexes quite a bit. Now, as you can see here also, I've added a paper mache finish to the outside of it. Just to, just to represent a kind of a rough, kind of a plastered finish. The paper mache kind of gives that texture. Okay. And the first time I attempted this, what happened was because I didn't have these timber reinforcements in here, is you can see the walls began to curve on me. That's because we applied a wet finish to dry card and it caused some warping and shrinkage to happen. As you can see here, the sides actually warped quite a bit as well. You can see the curve there along here. So to prevent, prevent that and to strengthen up our model, we add in these small pieces of timber inside here. Now they're simply cut to length. The thickness of them is about eight millimeters square. It's just pieces of scrap timber. And all we do is we add some PVA glue to the sides along here and along here. I'll actually show you that. No. So I'm just using normal PVA glue, wood glue in this instance. And I want to put a small bit of glue along the two sides that I want to reinforce. Once I have my glue added, I simply pop that into the corner of the model there, like shown, and I hold it there for a couple of seconds just to let it 
kind of get its own position and set. And what this will also do is it'll keep your corners, all four of your corners at 90 degrees to each other. So they'll be perfectly square. So if you carry on that process and follow the same pattern roughly as what I have done here, that should be adequate to hold the sides of the walls together. Now I'm just going to show you quickly on how I actually applied the paper mache finish. The paste we use for the paper mache is an equal mix of water and flour. And we also add in a pinch of salt just to stop any mold growth that might happen because we're mixing water and flour together. Now the process to apply the paper mache to the model is actually fairly simple. We simply paint on the paste onto the front of our model here, the outside. Now we're going to be covering every single part of the outside of all four sides of our model. So we paint on the base layer of the paste. We get pieces of newspaper that are pre-cut into strips and you simply stick down the newspaper onto the wet paste and you can just add a light coat of paste over the top of that then to seal it down into position. Now what I've done in my other models is I always try and line up the edges of the newspaper say with the edge of the window opening here and with the top of the wall here just to save me having to trim any off again when it, it all sets and goes hard. Down the bottom here what I usually do is see there's a bit of an overhang there. I paint on a bit of paste and just wrap it around the bottom corner like that. Now I usually cover the whole outside of the model leaving out spaces for the windows and doors and I go around the model with kind of two layers of paper mache. I do one layer, I let it set and I go on to a second layer and when it's all set and goes off hard and cures you get up end up with a finish that looks like so. Next I'll just show you how we actually put a finishing paint coat on the outside of the model. So once the outside of the model is completely covered in the paper mache finish, what I do next is I give it an undercoat or a base layer of paint in a dark grey. Now the reason for this is just to hide off any of the ink or colours of the paper mache finish which might actually be able to be seen through the white paint finish that we'll add to the model. So just pick a dark colour, it can be a dark grey or even a black and just paint it over the newspaper finish and let that dry. Now to finish it in the final colour, white, as shown here, what I do is I get normal white paint, normal white acrylic paint and I put a small bit into a, t a paint tray like so. I then just get ordinary household salt and I put in a sprinkle of that with it as well also. And I just mix that up together. Now the reason to add in the salt is just to give it an extra bit of texture as well and to kind of make it more realistic looking as a finish for the model. And after that then it's just a matter of painting the model. Try to keep your paint coats nice and thin. Don't put on too much paint because it'll take an awful long time to dry and sometimes it won't even dry at all. It might harden on the outside but it could remain soft underneath that layer, first layer of paint. So paint your model like so and let it set. Now as you can see here, there's about enough paint on that for the moment. It might take two, three or even maybe four coats to get a standard of a finish like the outside shown here. Now as you can see there on the gable end you can kind of see the little stipples of the effect that the salt gives it. So it kind of gives a grainy effect 
which actually looks quite nice when it's all finished. So you repeat that process for the whole four outsides of your model. So from the paper mache finish, remember you put a, an undercoat of a dark gray on and then you begin when the dark gray is dry to add a white top coat.